NVIDIA launches the fairest GPU of them all. Sony can't launch a VR headset to save the company and AMD is making gaming faster for all of us. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, April, May, March 20th, 2024. I must apologize. I made a community post about this, but we ended up uh, being in the hospital with my son for several days last week, which uh, disrupted a lot of the workflow. And then after that, uh, I did not post about this, but I ended up getting strep throat during that entire process. So I have been recovering. I'm still like not at a hundred percent, but it's, it's hot dog day. So let's give you the news of the hottest stuff because NVIDIA announced at GTC, they've got the fastest GPU ever made. This was actually the first GTC in six years that we haven't live covered. And that's because I have not been feeling well, but we now have the understanding of what the Blackwell chips from NVIDIA are going to look like. And they're gonna be 30 times faster than the previous generation Hopper chips, which is what everybody has right now. CEO Jensen Wong showing off the gigantic gigantic massive chip which we'll talk about in a second but they're claiming that blackwell is between 7 and 30 times more powerful faster than the previous hopper chips and that's based on different workloads and what you do and it uses 25 times less power and jensen said this to a massive crowd at gtc probably one of their biggest in the years they've just had a swell in popularity it's kind of the latest like meme stock where like everybody's all in on nvidia which out of all of the like media hype stocks I've ever seen. I would consider NVIDIA one of the more deserving ones over a company like Tesla or GameStop or at one point Bed Bath & Beyond kind of had the AMC also in that category. NVIDIA actually is and has been driving a substantial business for a long period of time. But generative AI, the use of AI for these chips is a big deal. They talked about how it has 20 petaflops of AI performance compared to the four petaflops that the H100 has. And that's thanks in part to the fact that this new B100 chip has 208 billion transistors, which in case you're keeping count, the previous one had 80 billion transistors. So not only did this pass the hundo billion mark, it also doubled that. And Nvidia achieved this by having chiplets where they have two big dies that each should have about 104 billion transistors. And these are connected with a fabric that can communicate at speeds of up to 10 terabytes a second. So a lot of this was pomp and circumstance and video talking about how this is coming later this year. They're, they've already pre-sold a lot of this. A lot of CEOs and executives from other major companies just kind of fawned over Jensen and told them how much they loved him in little letters that were popping up during the GTC event. And people saying, NVIDIA is the best. We love NVIDIA. This should absolutely not be viewed in light of other conversations that we've had on Hot News where companies get blacklisted for looking at going with other hardware companies for their AI. They don't necessarily get not sold NVIDIA GPUs. It's just that they're timeline slip. So there's no reason why these companies would feel the impetus to make sure they shower praise upon the leather jacket wearing God that they have before them. It's just, it's just pure, unadulterated, philic responsibility that they have. It is, it's, there's no other implications here at all. One of the not surprising things is that Nvidia chose not to disclose the price of these Blackwell chips. Number one, they're not exactly ready to be brought out to the public yet, but then also they don't need to have a price. It's gonna be set by companies like OpenAI and Facebook and Amazon, all of these major corporations with billions of dollars at their beck and call who can choose how much they're gonna spend on these chips, how much value can be generated by this. And they will tell Nvidia how much they're willing to pay and Nvidia will sell it to them for that much. And if they won't buy it for that price, they'll find the next highest bidder. So they don't need to disclose a street price because it seems like that doesn't matter anymore. The current H100 chips are sold out to who knows when. And so with these new ones that are up to 30 times as fast, well, if you don't have them, then you're losing the AI race, which is kind of the sentiment that's being shared across everywhere. NVIDIA also showed off, not only do they have these single chips, but they have these giant clusters of GPUs. Their 72 Blackwell NVL72 GPU cluster can get up to 1400 petaflops on FP4 TensorCore performance. Absolute behemoths 
of graphics cards just being slapped together. I believe the total amount that can be put together is like 576 B100 GPUs can be interconnected and it's just, it's mind boggling. But this is something that if you've been paying attention to Nvidia for any length of time, they have been talking about these interconnects, these giant DGX servers since 2018. They've been talking about Tensor Cores since they showed off that Star Wars demo way back when, where they had the realistic ray tracing that was going across Captain Phasma's face. Nvidia has been beating this drum for six years, and now the software side and the economic incentives have finally caught up to where Nvidia has been trying to push the hardware industry, and they're reaping all of the rewards for this. AMD has likely no answer that they're going to be able to release to the public anytime soon. We'll talk about how AMD did respond in a second, but there are some leaks coming out on the gaming side for how it applies to you and me, and what we're going to get likely prices won't go down. One of the things that we're seeing with uh, NVIDIA's GPUs is that the power is scaling to the transistor size, not to increases in IPC or how much that they're actually getting through just increasing the performance of what they already have. So you need bigger dies, which means the price is going to go up. Maybe there's a power efficiency increase, but there's certainly not going to be cost savings that are going along with this. So I wouldn't, at least based on what we're seeing from the AI professional side, the gaming chips likely will not get cheaper. There was incentive for that before with die shrinks and being able to have increase in the throughput. Eh, we're a little iffy on that right now, but it does look like they will share the same node. The GB202 die, which is supposed to be the gaming one, should be based on the same process as the big fat flagship GB100. So a 30% increase in density, but then also they're supposed to be roughly similar L1 cache on the gaming side. So it's supposed to be significantly improved over what we already have in the Ada Loveless and the Ampere designs, meaning that there should be some throughput increases, but but it's not, it's not quite clear how much it's gonna be. This is something that Nvidia tried to push with one of the reasons why they didn't give us extra VRAM. Their cache increases were something that mattered, but I, it's gonna be hard to translate that to just mass marketing for a lot of people. But hopefully we get some more clarity on the RTX 5090 50 series later this fall, probably around Gamescom. This is how it's kind of been happening for the last few GPU releases. The big announcement of the architecture is at GTC and then something like Gamescom or potentially they might partner up with the Game Awards at some point could could have that announcement come out later on down the line. AMD, of course, not going to be left out in the snow. They talked about the fact that they are going to ship a lot of their cards. They are discussing this over at GDC, the Game Developers Conference. They said that they should have about 7% of the AI market once all is said and done with their MI300X AI accelerators, which is AMD's answer to what NVIDIA has been selling heaps and droves of. And based on a lot of metrics, people are buying AMD, some because they want to support AMD and they believe in the mission, but also probably because they can't get their hands on NVIDIA or they don't want to kowtow to the leather sleeves. Who knows how it plays out. But obviously the most important question that I know everybody's been having is was Jensen wearing a leather jacket at GTC? And the answer is yes. And it's a $9,000 lizard embossed leather jacket. It's brand new and you can pick it up yourself if you want. Look at it. The more you buy, the more you save, which is not how today's video sponsor works. But uh, the more you buy, the more I can donate to Syngap Research Fund because today's video is brought to you by Rare Brew Coffee. One of the things that we embarked on last week was taking our son to various hospitals to get him treated for Syngap, which causes him to have over 100 seizures a day. He has many complicated medical needs on top of that. And we are big advocates here for making sure that we're gonna provide our son not just with the best treatment that we can get for him right now, but also the best future we can if we advocate with doctors, with researchers and everything. And that's where Rare Brew Coffee comes in. For every bag of coffee that you buy, we donate a portion of the profits to Syngap Research Fund, who has been advocating for everything that's changing in the world of Syngap. It means a lot personally to our family, but also importantly, it's dang good coffee. It's very delicious. It has citrus notes, some chocolate taste to it. It's sourced from two different countries of Brazil and Ethiopia. A beautiful blend that tastes delicious either in ground 
or in whole bean and you can prepare it yourself however you want. We want to thank everybody who has supported Rare Brew as we've been going. And in case you want to pick up a bag for yourself, you can use code UFD10 to save 10% off your first purchase of Rare Brew coffee. We'll have that linked in the video description. Big thanks to everybody who's been supporting us through that. I mean, we just, we're seeing the results of all of the advocacy and the changes and the fundraising that we've been doing with things like the Cannonball. Those things are actually making material differences now. We got to visit the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia last week, uh, and we got this great picture of everybody holding a bag of Rare Brew coffee because we made sure that they felt appreciated for their efforts and provided them with coffee. But a lot of this doesn't happen unless parents advocate for their kids. And this is one small way that my wife and I have decided that we're gonna advocate through our love of coffee. And Sony has no love when it comes to VR, even though they've made two VR headsets, they're not going to be making very much more of the PSVR 2. They've halted production because of drips of sales that have been coming through. Not a ton of people are buying this, what is a, arguably a pretty well-specced headset, but unfortunately it is not well supplied on the software side. It launched with a couple of notable titles with Horizon Call of the Mountain, as well as Resident Evil, but there hasn't been many first party announcements or support for this since that happened. They recently had a state of play, not a whole lot of talk on PSVR 2 titles. So it seems like they're just not supporting it on the software. And so they're gonna stop selling the hardware, which I've never seen Sony do this before. Kyler? When has Sony released hardware that they poorly supported on software and then didn't sell it anymore? That they poorly supported on software and didn't sell it anymore? Yeah. Never, right? Never. It hopped down here. PlayStation Vita? Never. PlayStation Portal? No. PlayStation TV? PlayStation TV? Which one? <laughs> the, the PlayStation TV that was based on the Vita hardware, the PlayStation TV that was a 3D TV that could do split screen. <laughs> Both. But you know who is supporting their stuff on software side? Amazon and their cloud streaming setup. Amazon Luna announcing a partnership with GOG, also known as GOG Games, which is run by CD Projekt Red. One of their major things is that they sell games DRM free so that you don't have to validate any of your files. You can install it on as many systems as you want. It's a very nice way of having your games be your games. And they are partnering with Amazon Luna to make it so that you can cloud stream your games if you want. To. You can buy GOG games through the Amazon Luna storefront or games that you purchased on GOG should soon be supported on Amazon Luna so that you can play them wherever. So in case you want to pick up something like Cyberpunk and you don't necessarily have the hardware to run it the way that you want to, Amazon Luna could be there for you to be able to play it that way. I honestly am in support of something like this. This is something that I think Stadia should have done. It's one of the reasons why I think GeForce Now is successful is because you are buying games that you can then use on systems after the fact. It's not just something that's tied to that cloud gaming platform like Stadia was. So I, I'm, I'm happy to see this. I really can't see much downsides to a partnership like this. So two thumbs up from me and Reese. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well. It's been a while, but hey, we've got some deals for you today. Starting off with this Corsair RM750X Shift 750 watt 80 plus gold fully modular side interface power supply for only $89.99, making it $40 off. Then next up, we have this Antec Performance Series P20C Mid Tower EATX case. This big boy is going for only $89.99, making it $30 off. And then lastly, we have this one terabyte Samsung 990 Evo M.2 SSD for you guessed it, $89.99. 99 cents except if you use the promo code it goes down to 79 dollars 99 cents bringing your total off to 45 dollars and hey them's the deals you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers well reese it turns out we can't easily replace you with ai unless we disclose it to youtube first because they've announced that they have new rules for how creators can put generative ai and significantly altered content onto youtube and it must be disclosed on the creators end first with them describing that altered or synthetic content will apply here including examples of using the likeness of a realistic person things like deep fakes or altering footage of real events or places such as making it appear as if a real building caught fire 
or altering a real cityscape to make it appear different than in reality, or generating realistic scenes, such as showing a realistic depiction of fictional major events like a tornado moving toward a real town. However, one of the questions that gets begged from this entire thing is what is significantly altered? How realistic are we talking? Uh, what, what are the parameters and metrics of where it crosses the boundary? Does like an explosion effect like Ricketts is gonna do right now, does that count? Does it look like my basement is on fire or is that just it like it's altered, but we didn't use AI and they're not really talking about AI, but they do mean it. it it's not clear, it's very ambiguous. Uh, and YouTube is, of course, going to have no clear rules and then a lot of clear consequences in that if you are not properly disclosing the way they think you should, you could potentially lose your partner program participation, which means you can't be monetized, which like theoretically is uh, a valuable endeavor so that like it's preventing misinformation and severe propagation of false content. But at the same time, YouTube has not necessarily been good at clarity in the past. And even though, you know, people can get a warning of a community guideline strike from a certain gaming company who is very litigious for no good reason, despite the fact that we did absolutely nothing wrong. And then they were supposed to roll out a like driver's ed type course where you could get that removed from your account, but then didn't actually roll that out to us. And even when another major YouTuber who has over 10 million subscribers got us in contact with their YouTube rep who was supposed to help us out with that, and that rep stopped responding to any emails and we don't have any access to it at all. And so if we do even something that's not really wrong, but YouTube thinks it's wrong, we lose our channel for a week. None of, none of that, I'm not worried. I'm not in trouble at all. I'm not in trouble at all. I came back from the hospital trip and Kyler had stole my coffee. Where is it? Yeah, we, you threw it away, thank you, yeah. I had to bust out a whole new bag just to have some at the set. Well, AMD wants to bust out a new way of making video games or making them faster. Sorry, my segues are gonna be a little rough, but they talked about at GDC, the fact that they found a way to make video games run more performant on their GPUs. Tom's hardware says it's 64%. That's because they did math wrong. If you look at everywhere else, it's 39% improvement that you can see because they're using a different pathway to render out different things that gives the GPU more freedom and relies less on the CPU. So with the 7900 XTX using this new setup called Work Graphs, which is a DX12 feature that's built into video games, you can potentially get performance improvements. AMD did say that this is super early, so potentially the numbers could go up, they could go down, it could uh, even out where they find that uh, in some games it's better, in other games it's tremendously worse, so it does it gets implemented on a ad hoc basis. But these mesh nodes, which are part of the work graphs, kind of allow things to be better, and they showed off this chart, which compares it to execute indirect, which is the previous way of doing it, which this is how Tom's hardware messed up the numbers. Execute indirect is 64% worse than work graphs, but when you reverse that, that means that work graphs is 39% better that's the if you if you think about it for a second okay 100 is 200 percent of the number 50 but 50 is 50 percent of the number 100 even though you're comparing the same numbers the direction that you compare them from changes the percentage that you anal analogize them so it's not a 64 percent improvement the execute indirect which is the 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 main thing is 64 percent worse but you're not getting a 64 percent improvement it's a thing but 39 percent is nothing to sneeze at if things can change behind the scenes game devs can implement work graphs we can see something that's baked into dx12 come out and your games run faster that'd be great this is not necessarily actually native to amd nvidia can implement this as well they just have been talking about it they've been talking about how they're gonna make a kajillion dollars from selling all of their ai stuff amd at gdc trying to do right by you telling you they're making games faster for you and nvidia they're they're skinning lizards for jensen's wishes and i'm gonna skim your comments for my wishes because i wish to do comment response this is from last monday's episode of hot news which happened to be March 11th, so just a few days late, we got DeCocker 
terrible name, saying Elon's going to buy TikTok and he's going to change the name to TikToks. I get what you're doing. I don't like it. Biomagic saying, no way Ingridia is keeping the same memory bus for the 50 series. They would never. No, no chance NVIDIA would do anything that's bad for their gaming customers ever. William Rain saying, about AMD, is math taught in school anymore? People just don't seem to understand percentages. Wait, maybe all your fans are under eight. I'm 68. I get it. Thank you. This is in reference to the fact that the increase in market share for AMD is less than it's ever been before, even though it's still an increase. It's the smallest increase. Anyways, as I just went through with that number discussion earlier, the, the, the direction of percentages matters a lot. And I've been fighting this battle since like video number five on UFD Tech. Like when I started talking about how much better things were, People, people argue a lot on the internet about that. Maybe we just stop using numbers. What if we stop benchmarking? Nothing's better than anything else. It's all the same. Just close your eyes and imagine video games, okay? Then finish Techie saying, Brett calmly arcing like the absolute dog he is. 100. I was arcing like a seal. I wasn't a dog. And then we got Andrew Geiger saying, I got my bag of Rare Brew Advocate Blend coffee over the weekend, and I've been making delicious espresso with it every morning. I haven't made drip with it yet, but I'm sure that'll be delicious too. Thank you so much, Andrew, for the support on Rare Brew. It's been, it's been good to see everybody trying out their coffee. We've got a lot of good feedback, a lot of different plans coming in the works on uh, how we're going to improve it. Dark Roast is probably next on the pipeline. That's going to be the big thing that we'll, we'll have next because a lot of people requested that. And I'm going to request that I stop hot news because I, I want to go rest now. I'll see you hopefully back here tomorrow for more of the hottest tech news.